process. You may not like what you get, but you're going to get it. First and you're going to get something you, you otherwise wouldn't have. wouldn't have had, so it's still information. <clears throat> but you may not like it, but the answer is you have it. Yeah. Okay, so a quick case study of SIDNET, right? Canadian Community Economic Development Network, which I'm currently president of somehow. Um, and uh, the biggest thing I bring to the table, I'm not an expert in social enterprise. I'm not an expert in CED. Um, I got involved with the organization a few years ago because I thought they were cool and maybe could bring some, I'd like to see a stronger presence in Atlantic Canada. Um, they are a national organization. Um, the biggest thing I think I bring to the organization actually is my nerdiness around governance. Uh, so I've been stirring the pot a wee bit uh, Grant's been helping. Uh, Grant does uh, coaching for EDs and chairs now. Um, very reasonable, highly recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's been coaching, I took over in June as president, and I think in September he started doing some coaching with uh, the ED and I. Uh, just, uh, and we're doing it every three or four months, so we're not getting together often. But what's great about the coaching from Grant is uh, it's an opportunity to think. As a leadership team, the chair, president, and ED, to have some time to think about where the organization is going and what it is trying to accomplish. Um, is that the right thing to be trying to accomplish? If we are doing that, are we serving whoever we want to serve well? All this kind of stuff. So the first part of our responsibilities are making sure our fiduciary responsibilities are taken care of. So we're actually um, having, uh, we're, the ED and I are working very closely together. We have like an hour conversation every month where we go over the agenda and make sure we've got all our business stuff in order, okay? Uh, we're also trying though to double down on our strategic priorities. So we have a strategic plan. But mainly, it is five strategic goals that we're focusing on. Um, and what's interesting is uh, we've also started to alternate meetings where one meeting is a business meeting, the other meeting is a more in-depth strategic deep dive. So January was our first strategic deep dive meeting where we took an hour and we used something, we used a Google Doc spreadsheet where we had questions and people's names. And the idea was that either ahead of time or during the meeting, if you were having trouble finding time to express what you wanted to say or you're more of an introvert or whatever, you could just type your comments into that spreadsheet. And we had a record of it. Um, so that was our first deep dive. It was kind of broad. Um, one of the things we also got was a more visual representation of the pro range of work and projects that the organization is doing um, to help people who are different styles of learners be able to absorb the information because we have a lot going on but it's all project based which is ridiculous, right? So revenue diversification is one of our new strategic goals is figuring out how to move beyond just being project based. Um, we're also in March, we're doing a deep dive on one strategic goal where we have a spreadsheet with multiple questions and uh, we'll, we'll be using the same format again, people liked it, um, but we are focusing in on one goal which is increase engagement. What, is, what exactly does that mean? How will we know when we've been successful at doing that? So those are some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, and then in May, we're having uh, someone come, oh, we're also having someone come in in March and do a half hour board education session on developmental evaluation. So Grant is also a big advocate of board education and bringing people in to talk to the board about different tr things, trends, whatever. Uh, and the other thing we're doing is in May, we're having another deep dive face to face where we're having someone come in from the Chantier in Quebec and talk to us about their journey, their experiences and stories uh, for a full day, then we're having a day to reflect deep on what we learned from that and how we can make use of any learnings in our own organization. That has been extremely powerful, shifting from this every meeting's a business meeting to 
one is a business meeting, one is a deep dive strategic meeting. So that's really helping us double down our str strategic responsibilities. And then we're starting to think about what we should be doing in a generative way and bringing in someone to, from the Chantier, for instance, and, and spending a full day with them, learning about what they're up to uh, in another perspective is a key way we're doing that. So one and two, you guys are on the bus, but number three, you're outside the bus. Yep. Yes. So that's just generally uh, what's happening with that. So how does this all tie together? And this is some basic governance. Does anybody know what I mean uh, potentially in relation to governance related to minimum specifications? It's not a term I use in here. <clears throat> okay. So minimum specifications is a term that I first heard uh, a fellow John Ure. Do you know him? No. Anyway, he taught strategic planning as part of the nonprofit leadership program at Dalhousie. So, and minimum specifications is what's the minimum you need to know about your goals to be able to move towards them, okay? And then worries or concerns are the things you don't want to have happen in pursuit of those goals. The idea is.